Olani Dube. Mr. Dube, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for coming through. I don't know if you were listening to my conversation with a spokesperson here. Your take really on uh, the latest revelations. Hey, the curtain has fallen. There is no new dawn and there is no unity in the ANC. But uh, what we are witnessing is a serious hatred amongst the top elite of the ANC. And what, what we heard yesterday from Julius Malema, I think is going to fuel fire in that NEC because you understand that currently there was a commission that was supposed to be headed by the former president of, of our country, Baba Ohalema Motlante, to investigate those who were uh, in talks or those who were trying to, uh, to establish uh, parties in order to counter the ANC. And so now we are hearing again that those who were the advocates or the proponent of the new dawn and the unity, even themselves, were having the same strategy that says if we lose here, we have to come with something that is going to counter the ANC. And so it's clear that both the new dawn and the so-called the RET, they don't want this ANC to exist unless if this ANC exists according to their terms. Mm -hmm. But you have the uh, former uh, tourism minister, Derek Hanukum, really uh, saying that uh, that particular meeting did indeed uh, uh, take place. And the spokesperson saying now that uh, the ANC will never let the opposition party uh, uh, to, to set its agenda. What, what do we read within that? Because I was asking him as to what will the ANC do? Uh, regarding this issue and he says no if, if 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 they speak about it it will happen at the NEC meeting but if they don't uh, they won't be dictated by by the opposition party look you have to understand that the ANC always come with an arrogance but this arrogancy at the end of the day become an um, embarrassment to the same ANC because what he's saying is is a clearly an indication that say even himself he's in a corner He's unable to speak against or for Derek Hanekom and is trying to be in the middle. But uh, the fact of the matter is, if an ANC member has transgressed a constitutional rule, that ANC member is supposed to face the disciplinary of the ANC. But uh, if I can take you back on the context of, the, of that uh, vote of no confidence. You remember that Makosi Koza came out clearly and made it clear that he, she is not going to vote with the ANC, but is going to vote for the, against the ANC. A number of people did the same thing, but they were coward. They never came out and say, we are voting against the ANC, I mean, against the, the president. And so there was an open revolt against Jacob Zuma. But the aftermath of that revolt is also a serious issue now because it deals and it speaks to what the Nazarek was trying to forge, of which is the unity and the new dawn. And that put Pulemabe and the others in a very awkward position to say, how are they going to deal with this? Because surely some of those who are saying they are voting with their conscience are some of the people currently are in an NEC. And so if we prosecute or if they persecute Tarek Hanekom, what about the others who are still there in the NEC, but who never went out and say, I voted against Jacob Zuma. And so the ANC is highly divided, and that is evident about what Derek Yarekom was doing, Makosi was doing, and those who voted against the marching line of the ANC to protect the president then. Yeah, and we know, of course, that Derek Hanekom has always been very vocal about his stance on uh, the former president. But how, how do you think the ANC is likely to deal with uh, Hanekom himself? Look, you, you, you have to understand that Derek Hanekom, <laughs> he, he belonged to a particular faction. That's why we must not mince our words. He belonged to a particular faction. And so if his faction in that NEC is strong, 
I think it's going to get protected. But see, on the other side, you have to understand that what is happening, what Malema demonstrated uh, yesterday, is that the so-called the black elite, they are not in contradiction. They are not fighting, but they are just actors. They just regulate our respective perceptions about how our country is supposed to move forward. And they pretend to hate each other, but there is something that always brings them together, is the common purpose of belonging to the elite class of our society. And so Derek Anacom and that NEC, is, is, an, is another form of an elite in our society. And so I can assure you, there is nothing that is going to happen to him. If something is going to happen to him, it will open a can of whammy in that ANC. Possible, that might be the demise of the ANC because you have to bear in mind that we have Malusi Kikaba also who view the current protection of Praveen Godan with a very different eyes, the way they dealt with him. And so the ANC currently is called Derek Anekom, is called also other issues. It means that the ANC in, is in a very peculiar and a very uh, painful situation. Only the elite who are enjoying, but the people on the ground are the ones who are worried, who are saying, if the ANC perish, what next for them? Mm. And we, we had, of course, uh, the commander-in-chief of the EFF, Julius Malema, uh, further alleging yesterday that uh, Hanukom was also planning to form a new political party should Nkosazana uh, Dlamini uh, Zuma win at, uh, at, at Nasrak. And a lot of people saying that if, if you ignore Malema and what he says, do that at, at your own cost. Obviously, because, he, you know, Malema is, is kind of an extended faction of the ANC. And he's played the role that uh, Patricia and Bandi Olomisa were playing then, where they were fit with the information, inside information of those who were against particular individual in the ANC. And so currently Malema is a, has managed to occupy that role. And so most of the things that he says, they turn out to be correct. But you have to, we have to accept that. We might think that there is ANC, a united ANC. There are two ANC in that ANC. There is an ANC that currently is led by Sir Ramaphosa, and there is an ANC currently that is led, that is led, co-led by Jacob Zuma as well as um, Ace Mahashule. And so I, I don't think that you have a united ANC, but these two ANC, what brings them together is the livelihood, is the salary that they extract from or that they get from the parliament and also other beneficiaries that comes with by being a, a political nationalist that is an administrator on behalf of the so-called uh, the ruling elites in our country. And so I don't foresee them really be at each other's throat to an extent that they would like to remove each other from this table where they enjoy the crumbs of the so-called called uh, the ruling elite of our country. Mm. But will there ever be unity within the ruling party? And is the president really able to unify? I mean, a lot of uh, times when he talks, he speaks about unity and unifying the party. But some people are saying that you have a divided top six as it is. Look, as, as I've always said, the person who managed to bring unity regardless, it was Oliver Tambo, post him. You know very well that uh, even in that 1991 ANC conference at Deppen Westville University, there was those who were claiming that uh, they are the Inzals, the UDF, the Exiles, and even within the Exiles, there was those ones who were seeing themselves coming from the European countries and those who were coming from the African countries. And bear in mind that ANC is an omnibus. In that omnibus, there is what we call it the Congress of the Democrats. There is Natal Indian uh, Congress. There is also those who are representing the colored community. And so in such an omni omnibus, you will never find unity, but you'll find people coming together for a particular common interest. And that common interest always mutates. And so it will be a fallacy to believe that in the ANC there will always be unity because ANC itself is a class organization. And so within that organization, there will always be class contradictions. 
All right, we'll leave it at that. Many thanks there for your insights. Kolani Dube, political analyst, joining us now live from our studios in Durban. All right, it's time now for our regular Democracy Gage, Peter.